center of the building for that whole move. Um, had to do a uh, administrative transfer yesterday, so then I made up to Coles County to do a, do a uh, interest, uh, conflict of interest with the staff member. Um, so I had to do that. That's, that's all I have for this point. job on Monday. Uh, I think they really uh, asked a lot of questions on me and you had a lot of answers. Uh, hopefully they accepted those answers, which they should have. Um, you got a couple of follow-ups, right? Yeah. New said, equipment. Yeah, um, I have. I should have brought that list of me this morning. I think and um, I sent that um, letter out to uh, Representative Baldwin on the inmate days, yep. um, so since 2004. Going back to the 2009 minutes, he asked the same question and was provided that information in 2009, so I had to repeat it again to yep. give it to him. Okay. There was another area that you had to they want a detail of the um, medical expenses for 2010. Okay. And um, to find out how many inmates I take in between midnight and yeah, right. eight. Between 12 and 8, right. right. Okay. Anybody? Further questions? Today's census in the nursing home is 103 residents. We have four Medicare residents, 30 private pay, and 69 Medicaid residents. Um, the nursing home budget, uh, the nursing home subcommittee will be meeting at 8.30 tomorrow, I mean um, next Monday, uh, prior to the county delegation budget review. Um, and okay. that, Go ahead. Sorry. Wait, for, for what purpose? Um, we met, we had one meeting. Um, uh, just to make sure that everyone is still on the same page okay. uh, in regard to um, the presentation. Uh, Kingswood uh, High School Career Day um, was y yesterday and Tuesday. Um, we were well represented by Mountain View Nursing Home, Cheryl, the Director of Nurses, um, Jean Chiavacci, Admissions, Jen Chiavacci, the Admissions Coordinator, Susan LeClaire, Activities, and Stephanie Mulberry. Did she? Jen, did she get married? Yes, she did. So that, I, I saw that name, yeah. and I said she must have been there. And I think what they were, they came back very energized and and believing that we would, you know, certainly encourage other other um, departments in the complex to participate next year. Um, mm -hmm. They students seem to gravitate to those in uniform. So um. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So I, I think that that will be. Um, Is so I was thinking the other night, and I think I may have mentioned it to Dorothy that. Um, can we start a mentoring program um, where somebody would follow an LNA, some, some student that might be interested in some department over there that they could? I know that Kingswood has that type of program. I'm unclear of, of Conway. I'm not sure if um, they're used to. When I years ago when I was at uh, the new high school in Kennett, mm -hmm. Kennett High School, they did have a department for, uh, for nursing, mm -hmm. uh, specifically. In fact, they have a room with beds and they teach them all mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's become of they that. They dropped it. They dropped that? Yeah, because they didn't have any interest. Um, that was the last I heard. And that, that I find... You got further? 
<coughs> we had looked into doing this with Kingswood. Um, part of the issue with them was um, they need to report back to the school after their oh, wow. shift, and um, we do, we had we had investigated it. Joyce Luongo and I did um, probably about a year and a half ago, and there was some issues with the students getting back to the school. So we might want to you know talk to them again and see if if that criteria has changed. I believe. Um I'll contact the director of volunteers at, at Huggins. She she is the one that coordinates yeah I coordinates that effort, that effort and um, we can see what can happen. I think the pro logistics is is, is yeah. more of the problem yeah. than than design. And it'd be worse for, for Kevin. Yeah. Oh, hold on. yeah. But but it, okay. it's certainly worth worth um, a call. I'll do that. Uh, moving day. Um, we're scheduling a meeting um, hopefully in March with Merrimack County Nursing Home. Not in talking about the actual physical move as much as we are the move of the residents. Um, we find it really, really important that that goes smoothly. And we know that they were successful. They moved 100 residents during um, during the day. And they had a party or a, a Hawaiian theme or a ship theme. But we really would like to get down to brass tacks now. What worked well and what didn't. And maybe we can learn some things from their mistakes. And also, uh, um, garner knowledge from what really worked well, which it appeared to be a, a smooth transition. Um, on that note, um, uh, Mr. Lichko is coming again tomorrow to meet with Bob Murray, myself, and also um, um, Susan LeClaire um, from the activities. Again, working on the move, our feelings, our sense, and um, I think we're almost down to the number of boxes as per resident. So, in there, the newsletter that just came out, we asked families to uh, please think about taking some things home prior to the move so then they can bring it back. So that'll be an easier transition. And the resident's main question every month is, where is the TV going and what size do I have the area to put the television on? So we, we publish that information for them as well. Um, also, um, I did talk about the, the new building and the, uh, the things that we just discussed prior um, prior to the meeting beginning. Um, we did have a loss of power for a few hours this past um, uh, this past weekend. Um, generator clicked on without issue, and I think that was the issues of the the, the, um, the wet and, and icy weather that we had. Also, um, the farm has been working uh, diligently on the roofs and. and Kudos to them for their work um, as far as not only the roofs but maintaining the, the areas um, for for us um, so that we can leave the building as well as for our parking, which has been a tough time this summer. Yeah. Would you put just a, a little note to the farm crew? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Show your appreciation. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. And uh, Commissioner Kenny, I don't remember if it was because of the meetings. I don't know if it was the 26th, but I know that you had mentioned that there was. Um, we had signed a contract having to do with, um, which was a, a, a renewed contract with um, Dr. Sabdi's um, servants, uh, Gerald's psychiatrist, and she, um, she did, did in fact note that there wasn't a date that was added, so an amendment, the, the article was uh, amended with the date, and he signed it, and I signed it yesterday. Um, that just about the Medicare contract? Yes, yes it was. Yeah, so yeah, that's, okay, that's, yeah, 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 I read it, and I didn't see it. Yeah. Right. So we've taken care of that. I thank you very much. Okay. Um, I think that's all I have to report. Okay. Have any changes that you're going to be speaking about next Monday? Uh, there are several changes within the budget, which yeah. will come up with some committee. During our subcommittee, we looked at several several items. Um, one was the electrical cost, uh, the, 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 what we budgeted for, and I believe we budgeted for $88,000. Um, $88, um, we went back um, to the um, uh, architect and she contacted the consultants regarding, you know, what is realistic for increasing, doubling our size of our, um, our facility. And basically, there will be an increased uh, charge or a budget, uh, monies budgeted for that due to the fact that of the cooling system. 
even though we are going to be much more efficient, we'll have motion detectors as far as the lights are concerned when you leave the room and forget to shut the light off and those kinds of things. So there will be added monies um, in that area. Um, also in the LNA line item, when we, when we budgeted for the um, increase um, in their salary, which came forth through the um, for the uh, union contract, that number that was increased was pulled from a different line item. So it showed on the actual numbers that it was more than what it should have been. Um, so that there will be a decrease, I think, by $40,000 in that area. And also, um, one other area under medical supplies, our, our census has increased from 95 to 103 residents per day. Therefore, we, we've noted an increase in that item. Luckily, um, the, not, the, the, um, the change in the LNA line item will more than, um, uh, more than um, offset, offset the, the prices that we see or the, the numbers that we saw for um, both the um, um, electrical use as well as the medical supplies. So it, it looks as though um, our increase in our expenses have, has decreased even further. And when you um, when you talk about the electric the electric cost, mm -hmm. we're going on numbers that we already have. That is PSNH numbers of the past. What we've done is we've looked at the PSNH num P uh, PSNH numbers for what we have done in the past. And um, I know that Kathy Gary did do some um, um, research in regard to the purchasing of electricity. Yeah. Is that right. correct? Yeah. So therefore, um, we're That's able to up. utilize that. And you know if we Again, if we are not moving in the end of July, but it's into August, then things will be offset a little bit. And I think also, I raised that question with the uh, electrical company that's going to be purchasing the power with the association, the Andrews Association, mm -hmm. of counties. Mm -hmm. And he said that 13 cents per unit was high, mm -hmm. that it should be more like 10. Mm -hmm. uh, so that estimate is probably considerably higher on the conservative side right. um, than it should be. And then if we buy electricity in a pool, it could be even cheaper. So I think we'll be okay. okay. And you're planning a tour for the residents? I asked yesterday at the um, yesterday at the construction meeting if there was a good time to, to have residents be able to put them on a bus and take them around the building. The reason for that is um, many of them watch through their windows, are anxious, but they don't have the opportunity to see the whole thing from around, you know, around that whole building as it is. Um, so that's something we're working at. And we're also, on it, we're also very uh, fortunate to have um, Chris Cass from Bonnet Page and Stone speak to the residents every month. So, you know, with those other things happening, I think that they should feel, um, they, they should be very happy. So I'm going to talk to Susan today to see how we can look at that. But the, the residents remain in the, in the bus? Oh, the bus, yeah, absolutely. But the issue is is that they're, they're only seeing it one, from one angle. Piece, just yeah, absolutely. Piece of it. All right. So how, um, I'm sorry. Good. But how long is uh, Cass speaking with the residents? Um, probably, well, it depends upon how many questions, um, but he okay. usually starts at 2 o'clock, and um, I haven't set the, um, I will report to you next week and tell you what day he's speaking, and hopefully and, and staff and, and as well as families are invited, but he, he speaks for about 15, 20 minutes and then entertains questions, and, and um, so it, it depends actually about how many questions, but it's, it's a short chat, but just going over what is being done. Um, as is spoken here, um, what is happening within the building, what they're seeing. They may see something different, you know, some some person, some worker doing something. So they may not necessarily be the questions that we would ask. Um, one interesting question at the beginning of the um, the project was, what about everyone is wearing different color helmets? Now, what <laughs> is that? And, you know, it was it was nice for the residents to be educated and to understand that that usually designated, designates the trade. And, um, so it's a learning experience for all, but most of it's about the building. Good. So it's just 